some figures to get dispute resolution, uh, formerly known as the Martha's Vineyard Mediation Program. And the committee has retained the program for its services to assist through this process. As my role as moderator this evening, it is to move the presentations through in a timely manner and to also ensure when we are at that portion of the program for comments and opinions and such that both the proponents and the opponents will have equal time this evening. And that, as I said, will be during the period of the event for questions, opinions, and even differing opinions um, and comments will be welcomed. Also, the committee would like uh, those attending this evening to know that they will be using this evening as an indicator of what the Chappaquiddy community would like to have for future relative to information and our public meetings to be held on the matter of bike paths for Chappaquiddy. A little bit of housekeeping. For those who might be new to the Chapel Clinic Community Center, the restrooms are in the back. I would like to ask that uh, tell cell phones be silenced at this time, other than those that are used for emergency communication. Also, the evening's event is being taped by NDTV, and the camera person this evening is Brianna McCormick. And assisting her is Belinda Rinkins. And again, this is being taped and will be viewed afterwards throughout um, on NBTV. This evening's program is, is divided into two parts. The presentation by members of the committee, Chapel Quake residents and island residents, and agency staff who will speak on subjects that the committee feel are important for you to hear and to get information on as you continue to formulate your own position on the pathways. The second portion will be follow following the presentation will again be that where we will turn to you in the audience for questions, comments, and even different opinions the opportunity to engage in dialogue with the presenters. At this time, I'm going to refer you to the agenda. We will be following the agenda in the order with one slight change, last minute, and uh, <clears throat> the environmental degradation and destruction by Norma Hassan-Hanti will precede the bike path cost. With that, I'm now going to turn to Jeff Hanji for an introduction. Hi, I'm Jeff Hanji, in case you didn't get that. Um, welcome to the Community Center and tonight's program on a subject that we're probably all familiar with, but one that concerns the future of Chapel Quick. And it's turned into a hot summer, and there are depths of feeling about this, the possibility of a large pathway alongside the road that can make things feel even higher. That's why we thought it would be a good idea to start out with some nice cold ice cream. Mm -hmm. There's also ice cream available for the end of the meeting. We can all talk and have some ice cream. I hope everybody who wanted some is going to get some. If you haven't finished yet, You'll notice that another pleasant thing about ice cream is you can eat it and still hear what's going on. It doesn't have a lot of crunch to it. Before we start, I'd like to thank the members of the Sherry Jackie Roads Committee for spending valuable time putting this program together. And I'd like to ask the members of the committee to stand just so that you can get a look at them. So I want to introduce them. Existing road 
running from the ferry to the parking lot. Such a path is intended for the use of walkers, runners, parents and grandparents pushing strollers, bicyclists, dog walkers, rollerbladers, and anyone else who isn't in a motor vehicle. We're all aware of the difficulties we've experienced while driving our cars and trucks in the summer as we navigate around all the people who are sharing our road. Over the past 30 years or so, the construction of a bike path, or is now a multi-use path, has been put forth as a solution to this congestion. And every time this topic comes up, there's a portion of the Chapman population that's alarmed by the prospect of such a major change to the island we all share. And make no mistake, this path, no matter what form it might take, no matter where it goes, to the Dyke Bridge, up to Wastely, alongside the road or through conservation land, would be the biggest and most invasive public works project Chapman Quiddick has ever seen. It would permanently alter the character of the island, cutting across beach grass, wetlands and woodlands, and would bring traffic much closer to those homes that are on the roadside. Small wonder that people resist such a change and question the very assumption that such a change would make anything better. The Sharon Chaffee Roads Committee is formed to examine the impact of a multi-use path and to be a source of information for the community. Also, as we're doing tonight, the committee is creating a forum for open discussion. Tonight, members of the Sharon Chaffee Roads Committee will address eight specific topics directly related to the construction of the multi-use path. They'll limit their presentations to five minutes or less. Following these presentations, as Deborah said, there will be a question and answer session. You can ask questions of the presenters or take time to voice your own thoughts and concerns. Deborah will keep us all to a time limit and hopefully as many of us as possible can be heard. So, take notes, speak out. Thank you.